Yo, yo, welcome to Small Mouth Crush. Today's video is gonna be all about drop shotting, specifically the types of drop shot weights that I use. They come in all different sizes, all different styles. And today we're gonna break each and every one down. Not each and every one, but we're gonna go through this big old box of drop shot weights. I'm excited. Anytime we're talking about drop shot, I get all excited. Oh man, it's a lot to cover. Let's get into it. All right, so today's video is all about the drop shot weights, all the different styles, sizes, why you use what. We're gonna break it all down and go through it. If you want more of an in-depth video, I did oh, a few months back, actually when I first started the channel, I, I did a video, kind of drop shot 101. So I went over all the different types of uh, rods and reels, uh, the line, the different types of baits I like to use when I'm drop shotting. And um, it's a pretty extensive video I put together the link below uh, in the description, you can check that out. Otherwise, uh, when you get done watching this video, I'll also have a link at the end of the video. Uh, you guys can take a look at that drop shot video I made as well. Maybe get you, get you some, uh, some more ideas on, on you know, the basics of drop shotting. Today specifically though, we're gonna talk about the weights. And it's kind of funny, I was doing a seminar a few weeks back and I had a question on the drop shot weights that I like to use. And I was joking with the guy, but I mean, I, I, I basically told him I could talk a whole hour just about drop shot weights and the different types of techniques that you use for each one. I mean, there's a lot to cover when it comes to just the weight itself. So we're not going to talk a whole hour today, but I do want to just kind of you get you guys exposed to some of the different techniques that you can be using when, when you are drop shotting, why it's important to have a variety of different styles and sizes of weights uh, when you're out there fishing. So I like to keep things simple, but by the looks of it, it's not too simple when it comes to the different weights. So this is like my mother box, right? This is all the different styles, shapes, sizes that I'm gonna use throughout the year. And we're gonna actually go through majority of these weights right now for you. Well, I also have a little side box. So this box here, this goes with me if I'm just going on a day trip, if I'm not going too far away, if I know that I might not be drop shotting a whole lot, at least I got some, some of the weights that I like to use and I'll always have something with me if I do decide to drop shot. But if I'm going on a tournament or if I'm going to a, a smallmouth body of water where I know drop shotting is going to come into play, then this big old box comes with me. I just don't like carrying this one. Uh, for day trips or if I'm just out fun fishing, it's a lot easier to carry this one around than lug this thing around. So if we open this up, all right, so we open this up, we really need to start covering the different types of material that drop shot weights are, are made out of. Basically, you're going to have two for the most part. You're going to have lead and you're going to have tungsten. I have a variety of both. I'll tell you right now, I use lead 80% of the time over tungsten. Although, <laughs> you really should use tungsten a lot more. Does that make sense? It does not make sense at all, Travis. Please explain. Okay. The reason why I use the lead a lot is because I'm fishing the Great Lakes for deep smallmouth. I'm, I'm going through a lot of drop shot weights. I buy all my lead in bulk, like two, 300 in different sizes at a time, and I'm reordering two, three times a year. So if I'm buying all tungsten, that's going to get pretty expensive. And because I drop shot so much, because I'm out there guiding, because I'm out there fishing tournaments, because I just love to drop shot, I'm going to be going through a lot more weights than the average person. Therefore, the standard lead cylinder weight is going to be my top choice for, for my situations that I encounter. Now, why I say leads, why I say tungsten's probably better option than lead is one, the obvious reason. When you're throwing tungsten, just like when you're throwing a Texas rig bait, lead versus tungsten, you're going to feel a lot more when you're drop shotting with a tungsten weight than you will lead. Now, I also feel that the tungsten gives off just a different sound when you're drop shotting. So when that weight's on the bottom, hitting, the, hitting whether it be a hard bottom or gravel or sand or whatever the case may be, it's giving off a different sound that perhaps if you're fishing in a highly pressured area, 
or there's a lot of you know there's a lot of boats that are you know if they are drop shotting a lot of times they're probably going to be using lead they might not have tungsten drop shot weights so if you put that on you can sometimes differentiate yourself from the other anglers give those fish a different look and maybe get an extra couple of bites because of it so it's important to use both now if I'm in a tournament where money's on the line or again if I'm fishing a high pressured body of water I'm going to be using tungsten but again when I'm up north when I'm out there where the giant smallmouth live and they don't see a lot of baits and they're schooled up and they're four five and six pounders and it's just you're catching a hundred fish a day I'm gonna use lead because it's cheaper and I don't really get that extra benefit of I mean I think some of the tungsten weights are just like I mean three weights for a buck or, or not a buck three for a buck like three for five bucks I mean it's ridiculous uh, lead, I can buy two, three hundred of them for the cost of uh, a pack of, of a couple tungsten. So for me, it just makes more sense. So those are the two different types of material. Now the different styles of drop shot weights, you're going to have your cylinder or your pencil weight, you're going to have a round ball weight, and you could have a teardrop weight. And I'm sure there's a few others as well out there. The fact there is, I, I have them right here. This one, this one looks like a uh, cucumber. And then we have here is just a, uh, there's a name for these kind. This is like the Gary Road. This is a walleye, a walleye weight. And I'll explain while I, use, while I use all those here coming up. So if we take a look at this box, right? Remember, we, we had the cucumber, okay? We got two ounce weights. We got three thirty second ounce weights. We got some weights with some weird edges to them. I mean, where do we even start? Well, there's a method to this madness. So as I said, majority of the time when I'm smallmouth fishing, I'm going to be using lead, and I'm going to be using the cylinder weights, pencil weights, right? And I'll carry those in, a majority are going to be 3 16th, quarter, what, 3 eighths, a half, and 5 eighths ounce. With the 5 eighths or the half ounce being used the most, especially when I'm fishing deep. So it's real important for me when I'm seeing these fish on the graph and I'm drop shotting and I'm right, right above them, I'm dropping the bait straight down to them, that I need to get that bait down there quickly. And a lot of times you're in 20, 30, 40 feet of water and there might be some big waves so the conditions up top aren't the greatest. I mean, you're hanging on the seat for dear life trying to drop shot in four footers. You're going to need a weight that's going to get that bait down there quickly into the strike zone and be able to catch that fish. And So oftentimes, when I fish a lot of these uh, uh, pro, you know, boater, non-boater format tournaments, I'll get, I'll get a, a co-angler in my boat that may not be used to drop shotting. And so when we get out into specific areas that I'm fishing, a lot of times I'll look back and I'll see that they're, they're drop shotting with like a quarter ounce weight or a three sixteenth ounce weight, and that's just not effective. Um, they're not going to be able to get that bait down to that, that fish quick enough and get that bite uh, if they're throwing such small weights. And I see that time and time again. So don't be afraid of a bigger weight. Um, it's going to be crucial in certain situations. Now, I'll use these smaller size weights, these 3 16th, 1 8th, a quarter ounce, a lot when I'm sight fishing. So if I visually see a cruising smallmouth, and I'm up on a, a break or a shallow flat and I'm pitching a drop shot to them, yeah, I'll throw a quarter ounce to that fish because I'm probably in 10 feet of water or less. And a big weight like this might scare them and it might just make that bait drop too fast. Sometimes when you're fishing for cruisers, the whole point of that technique is to have that bait fall slower in the water column, let that fish see it fall to the bottom so it can start heading over that bait and, and hopefully you get a bite from that. And so there is a time and place for the smaller weights. Uh, oftentimes when I'm largemouth fishing and, I, and uh, if I choose to use a lead weight instead of tungsten, it's going to be the same quarter ounce uh, cylinder weight or a 3 16th ounce weight, sometimes a 3 eighths. Just have to vary. Um, it's real, real important when you're drop shotting more times than not to be able to get that bait to that piece of structure, that area that you think there's a fish, 
and allow that bait to work properly and allow that bait to do its job. Meaning you want that weight to be heavy enough that when you make those lifts with your rod to put movement into that bait, that you're not moving the whole bait away from the type of cover that you were that you wanted to target and fish. So heavier weight's gonna allow you to feel that weight, give it just enough so that bait can move but stay in one place. Okay, so we talk about the teardrop weights as well as the, the round size weights and the cylinders. When to use what? Well, again, when I'm out on the Great Lakes or fishing, you know, the northern part of the country, Minnesota, Wisconsin, upstate New York, and I'm fishing deep, it's going to be that cylinder weight. It's going to come through the rock a lot better. It, it, at least it does for me. And um, I feel that I still get good contact with the bottom. But if you're really looking for real good contact and to be able to feel anything and everything that's down there, that's when you might want to go over to a round weight or a teardrop weight. You're going to have better contact with the bottom. Uh, it doesn't come through grass as good and it will get snagged up a little bit more. But if you're fishing, say, a softer bottom, perhaps some sand, some smaller gravel, that's when this round ball is going to come into play for you, a tungsten. You're going to be able to, be able to feel that. You know, maybe you're on a tidal body of water drop shot and you really need to feel that, that hard bottom compared to the softer bottom. And maybe it's just a small little area or section. And when that drop shot bait's coming over that hard bottom, you want to know for sure that you're in the zone where you want to be and that way you can slow down. You have the confidence that say, hey, you know what, this weight's telling me what's the bottoms like. I know that these fish are keyed on this harder bottom. I need to work this bait a little bit more in this zone. And hopefully you'll get more bites doing that. So that's the reason why I'd go with a round over a cylinder is if, if, I'm, if I'm fishing more of a transition, looking for more transitions, if I need a better feel for the bottom, that's what I'm gonna use just a round drop shot weight instead of the cylinder. Now oftentimes when you're fishing the Great Lakes or a major river that's full of big smallmouth, whether it be the St. Clair River, Detroit River, St. Lawrence River, number of rivers that have good current, good strong current, and a lot of times when you're drop shotting, what you're actually doing is you're dragging or you're letting that current move the bait for you. And so in those specific situations and it's not always current driven okay meaning current from the water from the rip from the river uh, you could have current from the wind you could be fishing in 20 plus miles an hour out on a uh, you know open water flat and the only way you can present that bait effectively is by dragging that drop shot bait and allowing those fish um, you know to see that bait constantly moving what I've been using over the last couple years is a drop shot weight made by uh, Art Ferguson actually makes it. He's a, a popular tournament angler and a guide, I believe, up on Lake Erie. But I bought a, bought a bunch of these weights from him uh, a number of years ago, and I've just been stocking up every year because I've been, I've been finding more and more situations to actually use this weight. And all it is is it's just angled. It's cut differently on the bottom. So instead of just a round bottom, there's actually a little bit of a, an angle to that, which allows that, that sinker to just go along the bottom. It helps with not getting hung up as often, as well as I feel the biggest benefit of using this weight is it's going to allow that bait that you're using to work more effectively with that current. So a lot of times when you're fishing current, you might just be using a, a small plastic finesse bait that you're just going to be dragging along, or you might be using a smaller swim bait that's going to need that constant action and by this current dragging this along the bottom uh, bouncing it off the structure it's just going to allow that bait to look more natural in the water so I do utilize those those weights uh, quite a bit when I'm in those types of situations now I mentioned I have a variety of different sizes and we talked about a 2 ounce and a 132nd ounce this is probably a 16th I'll find my 132nd right here so let's just talk about why two extremes, right? Well, each one has a different purpose, obviously. This two ounce weight, there's two different techniques that I'll use this for. 
One's going to be for power shotting, right? That's when you actually have a bait caster, or braided line, or heavy floral, and you're actually using a, a heavy Texas rigged creature bait or, or whatever type of plastic, and you're basically either punching or flipping that in heavy cover, whether that be uh, grass or wood or whatever the case may be. Uh, sometimes having those heavy weights is going to be more effective. Now, a half ounce, an ounce, all the way up to two ounce is the variety of sizes that I'm going to use when I'm power shotting. Now, I'll also use an ounce or a two ounce weight, more so an ounce in that too, in deep open water for smallies. And I'll use that a lot when I'm fishing a specific piece of structure. So let's say I know there's a big boulder down in 30 feet of water, and I, I kind of know where it's at, right? It's 40 yards to my left. And I'm lining up my pitch, I'm throwing my bait out there, and I got four foot waves and my, my trolling motor is on high, and I'm trying to position that boat. This heavier weight is going to allow it to get that bait down there quickly, and it's going to allow that bait to stay in that zone longer. So because I have a heavier weight, I'm able to deal with some of the waves going up and down, letting line out, keeping slack, and just feeling for that weight and letting that bait sit in that zone longer. So I utilize these heavier weights quite a bit when I'm dealing with specific types of structure that I need to target and keep that bait in the strike zone longer. Now these smaller weights, so the 32nd, the 16th, perhaps the 8th, these are great when I'm targeting suspended fish. So I'll drop shot not only when those fish are on the bottom, but when they're suspended in the water column. I might be over 30 feet of water and notice that the fish are relating to uh, either a bait fish or some reason why they're, they're 15 or uh, say 20 feet above the bottom, maybe 5 or 10 feet below the surface if you want to look at it that way. And I'll take my bait and I'll throw it on a 132nd ounce and I'm pitching it. A lot of times if I'm working vertical structure, things like that, I'm going to be using a real small weight to allow that, that bait to, to still fall but fall very slowly and allow those fish time to see it. And a lot of times when I'm fishing for smallmouth, you're going to run into those situations. And when you do, one of the best ways to catch those fish is with a small weight and basically throwing a drop shot for those suspended fish. It's something I use quite a bit um, and I actually look for that pattern as often as I can. It's really All right, so I also talked about uh, this, this way here. It looks like a cucumber. And some of these, um, I guess I think they're called walking sinkers. So again, if I'm in current, um, you know, this, this here drop shot weight works real good, that Art Ferguson drop shot weight. Uh, but sometimes I'll use uh, this. All it is is that shape just allows it to go through structure a little bit easier, as well as these walking sinkers here. And sometimes... I just keep these sinkers in here. A lot of times I run like three-way swivel with the weight swivel and then the bait back here, especially if I'm drifting or might be throwing a swim bait or perhaps a leech. Um, back home in Wisconsin, we call it a Wolf River rig, but that's another technique, which isn't, I guess it's similar to drop shotting, but it, you use some of the same weights for that technique as well. All right, so to summarize this whole video, Really, for the most part, I'm going to be throwing lead cylinder weights when I'm going through a lot of them and I'm up in smallmouth country. If I get into pressured situations or if I'm fishing in other parts of the country where it's a major tournament or there's money on the line, I'm going to be using tungsten. And if I'm looking for the hard bottom, if I'm fishing around some soft bottom, if I'm fishing you know, where there's not a lot of vegetation or real snaggy situations, that's when that round ball or the teardrop is going to come into play for me. If I'm fishing grass or heavy cover, cylinder, lead, unless I'm fishing grass for largemouth in a highly pressured body of water. You guys get it? Understand? Tungsten, cylinder, good. Of course, the weights for drop for drifting are a little bit different. You can get away, okay? You can get away if you're dragging and you don't own any of these other types of weights. You can use a cylinder just as fine and get away with it. 
uh, for me because it's what it's just a technique I love to do and I love to experiment. I'm always trying to find you know a better way of doing things when it comes to drop shotting. That's why I have an assortment of different weights uh, for that. I do want to cover a couple other techniques that you can use when it comes to weights for drop shot. And I rigged one up for you guys here to take a look at. All right, so here's a standard drop shot. You got your bait here and you got your weight below. But I want to show a little technique that I've been experimenting with over the last couple of years and something that sometimes can make all the difference in the world, especially if you want to stand out, if you want to give those fish just a different look. Now, we talked about tungsten lead and the different sounds that it makes. Well, you can also use some brass and glass, all right? So a glass bead, brass weights. In this case, these are bullet weights here. And just like you would a Carolina rig with the different sounds when, when the glass and brass hit, and you can use tungsten as well. You can use a variety of different weights um, and get different sounds. There's different knockers that you can put in here. Um, there's tungsten weights with a rattle inside of them already and so this just gives a different sound all i did was i put the first bullet weight through tied my hook put the bullet weight through then i put the glass bead in then i put my second bullet weight facing down so when they hit they're hitting the bottom part of each of these weights with the glass and then i just tied a little plastic o-ring for the stopper. I could cut that with a scissors and make it smaller, but um, you know, for this presentation here, you guys get the idea. This is another neat little thing that you can experiment and try. Uh, some people even throw a small jig with a hook for their weight. Um, Got to make sure it's legal in the body of water that you're fishing, but that's another technique that you can use. So there's a lot of different ways to experiment with drop shine. That's why I love drop shotting so much. Not only is it an effective technique that puts big fish in the boat, it's something that is my strength, it's something I enjoy to, to, to use and utilize that technique as often as I can, and there's so many cool ways to experiment. I mean, we could do a whole other video on just the different lengths from the weight to the hook and how to adjust for certain situations where there might be times you might be running a two and a half foot leader or an eight foot leader, believe it or not. Quite often, 8 to 10 foot leader can be the key in certain situations. So I could go on and on, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take a look at my Drop Shot 101 video that I'll link up right now. Um, as always, I appreciate the support. Leave any comments and likes below. And until next time, we'll see you guys on the water. <laughs>